Good afternoon. This afternoon I want to talk about seducing spirits and doctrines of devils on Facebook. And I want to talk about the casualties of fa on Facebook. There have been tremendous amount through the years that I've been on Facebook of casualties. People that are casualties to false teaching that has come on Facebook. There is a reason why there are these casualties. There is a major reason why, because the churches today are apostatizing left, right and center. They don't have a clear word from God. People go to church today and they don't find fellowship, first of all. They don't find correct doctrine, they don't find sound doctrine. And therefore, Facebook becomes the dumping ground for all kinds of heresies and false doctrines that will lead people astray. I'd like to make the statement that Facebook has become permeated to the very brim, overflowing to the very brim with false teaching and false doctrine. It is because people do not know the word of God. They are fundamentally flawed at their very, very foundation. When you are fundamentally flawed at your very foundation and your understanding of the scriptures, you see, unfortunately, when you don't know the word of God, you are going to teach things to people that is actually demonic. Anything that contradicts the Bible, anything that contradicts the teaching of the New Testament and the Old Testament, anything that contradicts the word of God as written here in diverse places is of the spirit of Antichrist. And you, my friend, if you're busy posting things and you don't know much theologically, you can lead people astray. This is a major problem. It is one of the biggest problems that the Church of Jesus Christ has ever had to face. And I believe people are apostatizing left, right and center and becoming casualties to false doctrine on Facebook because these people do not know the word of God. It is a fundamental problem. The fundamental, fundamental ear is because people do not know the word of God. They will sit and read Facebook statuses from different kinds of streams. They will listen to the Messianic stream. They'll listen to the Calvinist stream. They'll listen to the Pentecostal stream. They'll listen to the Charismatic stream. They'll listen to the Pelagian stream, which is heresy, by the way. They will listen to the Open Theists, and they will listen to the Roman Catholic stream, and they will listen to all different kinds of streams, not having any discernment what the Word of God says about these issues, because they do not know the Word of God. And therefore, they will take these particular ideas coming from all different streams. Some might be orthodox, some might be biblical, but at the same time, there is a mixture of that which is unbiblical. Now, you need to know that this mixture, according to the Bible, anything that is a mixture, you just need one little bit of poison to literally poison the whole stew. The whole stew becomes poisoned with one little bit of false doctrine. One little bit of false teaching poisons the stew. You just need one little bit of strychnine to be put in a chocolate and a little child will eat that chocolate and that child will die. Why? Because false doctrine essentially at its root. False doctrine permeates and destroys everything. It doesn't matter how good the doctrine is if you've got two different conflicting views one alongside one another. I think particularly of the Reformed tradition. There is some great teaching within the Reformed tradition concerning the sovereignty of God in salvation. They've got some great teaching concerning the gospel. They're right on the gospel. But you read certain of these early reformers, especially Martin Luther, who became an anti-Semite before he died. And you will discover that Martin Luther had a view about baptism that cancelled out the very teachings of justification by faith alone and his good teaching in the book of Romans. The one teaching cancelled out the other. He was teaching truth alongside error. Baptism does not say it is a memorial service. It is a spiritual, it is a physical act representing a spiritual reality that has already taken place in one's life. That we are baptized into Jesus Christ and we've been raised into resurrection life with Jesus. Jesus Christ. It is something that teaches us something of what has already happened to us. It is a memorial. It is something that is a memorial. The same idea goes with the idea of uh, the communion. Many people will say, well, it becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus literally puts his body and blood in that and it becomes the literal substance of it.
It retains the presence of Christ, says the Lutherans. In other words, there's some other way of salvation. In fact, when you sit in a Lutheran service, at the end of the service, when they deal with their uh, uh, Eucharist feast, they invite people and the guy will say, you accept this as your salvation, the body and blood of Jesus. In other words, Jesus has been re-sacrificed and re-sacrificed and re-sacrificed time and time again. Yet, the word of God says, for with one offering has he sanctified and sacrificed, been sacrificed and sanctified them forever. It's through one offering, the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. The same idea with the Eucharist feast. You see, they cancel out the truth of what they say with certain errors. And we need to deal with these errors because what they said was true. What Martin Luther said was true concerning justification by faith alone and the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ that no work. But then at the same time, preaching another teaching concerning baptism, saying that baptism saved and all these ordinances saved. The one truth, the one teaching cancelled out the other. The teaching was error. In other words, you have truth alongside error. You have a mixture. And in Reformed theology, sometimes when people get into the Reformed theology, you will have these true, these two things that will always stand in contradiction because they never got rid of that Catholic element. They never got rid of that Catholic influence. Therefore, the whole teaching of Martin Luther has poison in the stew. And you've got these people sitting in Lutheran churches who are saying, well, this is my salvation. And they sit over there eating that bread thinking they saved every single Sunday. No, for, for with a one offering has Jesus Christ literally been sacrificed. One, Jesus does not become the body and blood at the communion elements. There's no such thing as baptismal regeneration that when you are baptized in water, you are regenerated. No, it's through belief in the Lord Jesus Christ into Calvary. Now, it cancels out the other. So therefore, you will have certain Facebook statuses that will be perfectly orthodox and you'll read them and you'll say, wow, that's good. You'll read them and say, that's excellent. I'm so glad that person's teaching that he's a brother in the Lord, but yet you will find him say something that is totally heterodox, something that is complete heresy on the other hand, and it will cancel out. It just takes a little bit of poison to poison the whole stew. It takes a little bit of poison, a little leaven, a little compromise with false doctrine, literally leavens the whole lump. False doctrine is nothing to toy with. Listen to what I'm saying. False teaching is nothing to toy with. Turn with me, please, to the book of 2 Peter chapter 2. The book of 2 Peter chapter 2. We begin with the word of God and we end with the word of God. 2 Peter chapter 2. This is what the Holy Spirit says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 2. If I can find it in my Bible. There we go. I found it finally. It says over there, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord. Some of your translations say destructive. Cross that word, destructive heresies out, and put damnable. Heresy and false doctrine is nothing to toy with. It can damn your soul as much as adultery and homosexuality. Let me repeat it. It can damn your soul as much as homosexuality and adultery. You cannot play around with false teaching. False teaching is damnable. A little leaven, Paul says, leavens the whole lump. You tolerate a little bit of false doctrine, it will literally cause the whole lump to be leavened and expand with that false doctrine. False doctrine literally eats like a canker. The worm, Paul said in the book of First Timothy, doth eat like a canker. It literally is gangrenous. It will literally gang cause gangrene eventually. It's a canker. False doctrine needs to be exposed. And we have to name the names of heretics that are causing this false doctrine. People bringing truth alongside error, preaching one truth one time and one error in another. In such a case is a, the case of Justice Bossoff. <coughs> Justice Bossoff, I never heard of him until a couple of years ago. He will post statuses exposing the faith teachers and he will do it quite brilliantly. And you'll think, oh, well, there's a brother in the Lord. There's somebody that's teaching the word of God concerning the faith teachers. And he'll do one post that is brilliant and you'll think this guy is from God. Oh, he goes against Trinity Broadcasting Network. He goes against these prosperity cult preachers. But in the next few statuses, he literally begins to go against every cardinal doctrine and teaching of the New Testament. Every cardinal doctrine concerning the word of God, for the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. He denies the very inspiration of the Bible. He calls this book just words on paper. 
And only when the Holy Spirit tells him to read a portion or to quote a portion, he will do it because then it's inspired of the Holy Spirit, because Jesus told him. In other words, he claims this direct hotline to heaven and Jesus reveals, he talks to Jesus, he does not need the word of God. In other words, he denies fundamentally that the Bible is authoritative, that the Bible is the word of God, that the Bible is inspired, that this book is inspired of the Holy Spirit. He contradicts the teachings of 1 Timothy chapter 3, where it says all scripture is given of inspiration of God and profitable for righteousness and rebuke and training in righteousness that the man of God might be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. He denies this essential teaching concerning the divinity of the scriptures, as we have said in previous teachings, this is Jesus Christ in print. And this man has got a huge following. In fact, he's got a Facebook ministry. He has got a Facebook ministry. He is ministering to people this antichrist doctrine that is against the word of God. Anything that stands against the Bible is of the spirit of antichrist. So therefore, Justice Bossoff is of the spirit of antichrist and his followers are being hoodwinked into the spirit of antichrist. He's a Facebook seducer. And the worst part of it is he is making money off this particular garbage. He is making money. He has a ministry. He has a ministry and he has a name. He has a YouTube channel. He is deceiving God's people with lies. And people who don't know the word of God will be hoodwinked by this guy because they don't believe the Jesus Christ, they don't believe the word of God. And because they don't have a foundation in the word of God, no lies of the truth. Therefore, this book is truth. I will tell you something. The Bible is 100% truth. You want full truth? Oh, you want to know the future? You want to know everything? Forget about your fortune tellers. Forget about your occultists. They cannot tell you the future. You will find truth concerning the future in this book. You want to find anything about your life, anything that has to do with your living on this uh, fallen world as a Christian, you find it in the word of God. This is where you get your understanding. In thy word, we have understanding. Wisdom in all thy getting, get wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom is from God and knowledge is the wisdom applied. We need wisdom and knowledge in these days. And John writing in his epistle says, I write these things concerning those that would seduce you. Mr. Justice Bossop, according to the Bible, is a spiritual seducer. However, the casualties that has followed Mr. Justice Bossop into this apostasy, because a man's an apostate, and according to the Bible, he's an antichrist, had been many. He has blood on his hands. A few years ago, I had a young man on my Facebook status. I actually chatted to him on the phone. His name was Stephen Davidson. And he loved the Lord. He was growing in the things, in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Used to read people like J.B. Stoney and used to read my statuses. But all of a sudden, I started noticing something about Stephen. A couple of, about two years. He began to post things on his Facebook statuses that said the Bible is not the word of God. It's just pieces of paper with ink on it. It has no power whatsoever. It only becomes the word of God when it speaks to you which is nothing more than Gnosticism, because the, the word of God is the word of God, whether it speaks to you or not. Thy word, O Lord, is forever settled in heaven. The word of God is authoritative and inspired, whether you feel like it or not. The word of God is inspired of the Holy Spirit. And he began to literally say, the word of God, oh, it only becomes the word of God. This young man, in conjunction, reading with another woman whose name was Sheila Inami. Sheila Inami was this uh, charismatic guru who had all these revelations and she wrote weird stuff like she had, she was half antichrist come Christian. She, she said, I'm half the antichrist. And born again Christians, even in the sermon movement, were following this nutcase. She was a total whack job. A daughter of Belial, didn't know the word of God. She was some, some Chinese twit and moron. Busy preaching this stuff, busy preaching all this garbage on Facebook and getting thousands of followers in conjunction with Justice Bossoff. Mr. Stephen Davidson was reading this stuff and I went to Stephen and I said to him, be careful of these people. A big war ensued on Facebook because of it. With another guy called Zion Freak. You know where that guy is today? He's become this new age love guru. He has become a new age love guru. Preaching all kinds of manner of love. There's no such thing as heaven and hell. And God has become something of his own imagination, what he thinks God is. This young man was one of the very first apostates that I've dealt with. All because he didn't know the word of God. And he was warned repeatedly. 
He was warned by Zion Freak. He was warned. His name is Rob Zion. I think what is his name? Rob Rob Vogel. And his wife, Mizzy Vogel. He was warned. Watch out. Be careful of this false doctrine. It will destroy you. I went and warned him in love. I said, be careful. Today, that man is lying as a casualty on Facebook. He is a Facebook casualty. My heart breaks. He is a Facebook casualty. He no longer believes in the Bible. He no longer believes the word of God. Why? Because he listened to Justice Bossoff. When you begin to embrace something that is essentially heretical, when you go up on your foundation, which is the word of God, when you go up on some fundamental teaching, you become predisposed to a million and other kinds of heresy. You become predisposed to demonic infiltration and demonic teaching. The teaching of demons. Men shall abandon the faith. This is the faith. This is our creed. The word of God is our creed. So he abandoned the faith. He discarded, oh, the Bible is just words of, words of men on paper. It's not inspired of the Holy Spirit. This was the very beginning stages of Stephen Davidson's, Davidson's apostasy. He bought the lie. And very soon he got into the stuff with Justice Bossoff and all these other guys he didn't listen to warnings. Today, he is nothing more than a love guru, a new age love guru, talking poetry and all kinds of tripe on his Facebook page. I sit there and horror at what has happened to this man. What has happened to him? He's a Facebook casualty. He's a Facebook casualty who's literally been, been destroyed by the devil because of false doctrine. Why? Because he did not know the word of God. He was getting his theology from all different places and he didn't know how to handle rightfully and divide the word of truth. You can believe me and I will stake my life on it. Facebook can be very, very dangerous, not only for mature Christians, but for, born, for, for, for baby Christians. It is not a place for Christians to go for fellowship. It's not a place to get doctrine or study. No, these people don't know the word of God. So the first casualty, there was another guy. I remember. I'm going to name these names. They've gone so off, wouldn't matter if I did. His name was Nathan Crawford. He was in the very first Facebook page I had. Oh, Nathan Crawford. He began to mix Hebrew roots ideas with Calvinism. Now, I don't have a problem with five-point Calvinism. I myself was a Calvinist at one time. I now disagree with, I, I don't agree with the U, the L, and the I, but I agree with the T and the P. Those great Calvinist authors are brilliant. Those Puritans, I read them, they're tremendous. I just disagree with them on how they describe predestination. That is not an issue to divide over. It's a moderate issue. It is something that we can disagree to agree. I agree with predestination. I believe in it. But he was a Calvinist and he was mixing Hebrew roots ideas. He didn't have fellowship and he began to have fellowship on Facebook. There was something wrong at the root because right at the very beginning, he started denying the eternity of hell, saying that when a person who is an unbeliever died, he goes to hell eternally. He said, this is not a doctrine and this is not a teaching to divide over. It's a non-essential. What? The, the doctrine of hell is a non-essential? The doctrine of hell, the doctrine of eternal punishment is a non-essential, according to Mr. Nathan Crawford's view. And I remember I wrote to him, I said, you're nothing more than a son of the devil on his Facebook page. I said to him, you are nothing more than a son of the devil. You are leading people astray with what you are writing. Oh, he blocked me a few times. We had war, me and him. He called me a Corinthian coward, estrogen fuel, charismatic schizophrenic. <laughs> I won't tell you what I said in response. We won't go to those dark places. <laughs> I still wonder what an estrogen fuel charismatic is, but that is what Nathan Crawford actually called me on his Facebook status. <laughs> I'm still reeling at the implications of it. I don't know what an estrogen fuel charismatic is. <laughs> the man was nuts. But I was right about one thing. He was a son of the devil. This guy got into Hebrew roots. He just abandoned Calvinism, went directly into Torah observance, keeping the whole law and all the Sabbaths and all the ceremonial law. And very, very soon, he now has devolved to a philosophical Satanist. What? He now is a Satanist. He was preaching and he was proclaiming the following, that you are kept by the power of God and uh, you cannot apostatize. And by his own admission, he writes on his teachings of Torah. He had, a, he had a website over there. I'm now an apostate. 
He actually says it. I've now apostatized. He's now a philosophical Satanist. Yet another one bought the uh, bit the dust. Another guy bit the dust. And I asked him a couple of years ago, I got onto him and I happened to write on his wall, what happened to you? He said, oh, you would like to know. What is this? Here was a guy that, 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 that was seeking, a guy that definitely had the work of the Holy Spirit working and convicting him. The, the, the Holy Spirit got him out of Unitarianism, believing that all gods lead to Jesus, lead, all gods are right. Got him out of certain heresies. And he himself admitted that. Here the Holy Spirit began to work, but something stopped him in his walk with the Lord because he didn't have discernment. He didn't know the word of God. Oh, he knew Calvinism. He knew about predestination. And you asked him about all those particular things. Nobody can answer me. The man's an apostate today. He is another casualty on Facebook. I want to dedicate this to these casualties. It's a sad state of affairs. There we have Nathan Crawford, an apostate. A guy who once claimed, oh, well, they'll never worry of us. Well, yes, true. But these guys begin well. There should be compassion to be able to get these guys, try and warn them. He was the first. Stephen Davidson was the second. There's another guy called Donald, Sco Donald Scoggins. Spelled C-S-C-O-G-G-I-N-S. Donald Scoggins was posting things about Jesus. This was in about six years, seven years ago. And it was nice that we used to chat. We started getting to the Messianic movement, the Hebrew Roots movement again. I just love this. He even wrote things that said that the, the, the Messianic movements become the dumping ground for all kinds of things, that they begin to deny fundamental Bible teaching. He wrote this on his Facebook page. But he got into the extreme part of the Hebrew Roots Movement, where you have to keep all the laws of Israel, not just the moral law, but the ceremonial laws as well, forgetting that the book of Acts chapter 15 says that not even the fathers could bear all this stuff. It was a heavy burden. Neither you or your fathers could bear it, he said that in the book of Acts 15. And here he began to get into this movement and read literature and become part of a messianic synagogue, which they get into. We'll deal with this in another teaching. And he began to do all this kind of stuff. And guess what? Certain teachings, emphasis of the Hebrew Roots Movement coming from the Two House Movement or the Sacred Name Movement began to attack the Apostle Paul. And he began to have a problem with the Apostle Paul. He began to have a problem with one third of the New Testament, in other words. Buying the lie of some of these demonic deceivers within the HRM, the extreme movement. Now there's born again Christians and good orthodox men within the messianic movement, but this extreme left of it is heretical. I heard one turn around and tell me, oh well, <coughs> the apostle Paul is the antichrist that Jesus Christ warned about. I come in my father's name, but another you will receive. And he said, that's the Antichrist that Jesus warned about. Jesus warned about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was the Antichrist. It doesn't matter what Peter says in his epistle. That Paul was an apostle anointed of the Holy Spirit and wrote many things that are hard to be un understood. But yet the unlearned risk to their own destruction. Donald Scoggins got into this idea. Very soon he started hacking away at one third of the New Testament. Very soon... He probably got a pro had a problem with Jesus. And very, very soon he had a problem with the whole Old Testament. Do you see how false teaching devolved this guy? Because people don't know the word of God. Now he doesn't agree with Hebrew roots heresy anymore. He's now a practicing Hindu. He practices yoga. What? Another one. Another Facebook casualty lying down on the ground. Yet this guy was warned. He was warned by a guy in the Messianic movement who's a little bit too extreme in his Torah observance by the name of Rob Roy. Rob Roy warned him. I warned him. He wouldn't listen. A guy by the name of Mike Mendoza started loving reading my statuses. We started chatting on WhatsApp and I began to encourage him to study the word of God, but he started getting into the Hebrew roots heresy again. He started getting into the Hebrew roots heresy 
Very, very soon he started denying the godhood of the eternal son, which is essential. He was a guy that loved the Lord. Now he's getting into all kinds of stuff. He denies the essential of Christianity. Jesus is no longer there. He's just ripe to go into every kind of heresy imaginable. I will see him in 20 years and see what happens to this man. He added me on my, his Facebook page, my Facebook page a while back and then blocked me. The guy denies that Jesus is God. He denies that Jesus is the eternal son. He's gone off into error. He's another casualty and I tried to minister to this guy and I tried to help him and say to him, listen, you watch out for what you need. Watch out of the, for the doctrine. Told him to read some good books on Romans. Told him about the good messianics out there like Jacob Prash and Arnold Brockdenbach. He listened to them, but he went to this other extreme, Torah observance. This Mexican is now an apostate. He's another casualty lying down on the ground on his way to hell if he dies because he's renounced the faith. He's an infidel to the truth. These guys have committed the very act of infidelity. There can be no salvation after this act. Donald Scoggins, Nathan Crawford, Stephen Davidson. The casualties are lying on the way. They are casualties to false doctrine on Facebook. They're Facebook casualties. The Bible says seducers will wax worse and worse. What is the most ultimate plan of the devil? Not just to bring deception, but to damn you in hell. There it says it. Damnable heresies. Stephen Davidson's gone. Nathan Crawford is gone. These big name guys, they were doing well. Dolan Scoggins is gone. Mike Mendoza is gone. They're lying as casualties. They're lying as casualties. False doctrine has done its work. It's ultimate work to damn these people because they wouldn't listen to advice. They wouldn't listen to what the Bible says. Be careful, watch out. They wouldn't listen. The next one is Alex Pascalis, a guy I regarded as a friend. We used to talk on the phone. He began to get involved with some ideas of Pelagianism. I spent a lot of time ministering the word to this guy, trying to get him established in the faith. He began to have a problem with Calvinism, essentially, and certain ideas, and he didn't agree with it. What was his option? Well, we just go straight from Calvinism into Greek Orthodoxy. He embraced Greek Orthodoxy, which has become another heresy that people, that, that, that Satan is palming off as a work of the Holy Spirit. Greek Orthodoxy, with its idolatry and its occultism. They say, oh, we're not bowing down, we're not worshipping these, 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 these figurines inside. they dull, dreary, drab religion. We're not worshipping them, we're just honouring them. Bow down means to worship. They're worshipping demons according to the word of God. Behind every idol there is a demon. Greek orthodoxy does not know the Bible. Greek orthodoxy is away from the Bible. It is a departure from apostolic teaching. Greek orthodoxy is not a biblical Christianity. It's not biblical. It is not a good thing to exchange the Bible for Greek orthodoxy because it's an idolatrous idea. Who is this guy? He's in the Greek Orthodox Church. Do I believe he's saved? Most probably he is. I cannot say. But he's gone off. He's gone off into this apostasy. Another one bit the dust. Alex Pascalis, Nathan Crawford, Mike Mendoza, Donald Scoggins. The list just goes on and on and on and on. Because too many people are getting their theology of Facebook. They create a patchwork religion. They say, oh, this is going to be wonderful. I can get views here, views there, views there, views from their Annex views. Instead of realizing all things, you have to judge all things. There's some good stuff on each of the movements. But there's very bad stuff in each of the movements as well. Here a little, there a little, there a little. From charismania, from Catholicism, we just mix the whole lot together. And this is our Christianity. And that type of Christianity is unacceptable to the Lord. It is not a biblical Christianity. It is not a New Testament Christianity. It's not based on the Bible. It is something that you've gotten off a little bit. It's like this gaudy patchwork made together of all different conflicting views. And it's not biblical. It's not Christianity. What it is, is every hip heaped upon hero with a little bit of truth. And you just need one little bit of poison to be in that stew, to poison the whole stew. Facebook heretics. Facebook seducers. I write these things concerning those that would seduce you. Guess what? 
These guys were seduced. These guys are the casualties. They're lying down dead spiritually. They have literally lost their way. And another guy by the name of Ryan Watkins. Old Ryan Watkins, I liked him. We used to talk quite a bit on my first Facebook page. I liked the guy. Ryan Watkins had a group. He used to quote John Owen. He was a Calvinist. <coughs> I liked what he had to say, even though I didn't agree with certain things. I regarded him as a brother in the Lord. I left that page, started another page. And I forgot to add Brian Watkins. And I left him for about three years. And then I suddenly went back to that old page to see if there's anybody else that I needed to add. What a horror to see Ryan Watkins. He's now become a pagan. Something happened in his life. He now is a pagan. He doesn't believe in God. He doesn't believe in hell. He doesn't believe in heaven. And I asked him, I said, what about the teaching that you're kept by the power of God through faith? He never responded. That you're eternally secure in Christ? Never responded to me. I never got the answers I wanted. Ryan Watkins, he's another one. There's a casualty. He's a casualty to false teaching. He's a casualty. Something happened. Satan tripped him up on the way. He's dying today. He's dead in trespasses and sins. He's renounced Christ. The casualties of Facebook. The casualties of people all over the world. People are casualties. They are casualties to false doctrine. Why? Because they don't know the word. They do not know the truth of Jesus Christ. They do not know the word of God. They become casualties. Or maybe some of them just want to try it out and see what Jesus can give them. As if he's this fix. They come with the wrong motives. And they will hack on to some sort of a system like Calvinism or Messianicism. They'll only, they'll only do it as far as it works for them. Yet the scriptures tell us very clearly they went out from among us because they were not of us. For had they been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. Ryan Watkins, Mike Mendoza, Alex Vescalos, all these guys are casualties. They are casualties. They are casualties. And nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to care. And look at these casualties lying on the sidewalks. Who warned these guys? A lot were warned. But these guys are, are finished. Their once so-called great names on Facebook are finished. Why? Because they're casualties to false teaching. They are casualties. I want to warn and I want to tell you something. When you begin to see somebody on Facebook going off on some fundamental Bible doctrine, it happens all the time. Somebody that you love and admire, you think they're your friends and you think, wow. But then they start saying something that is unbiblical. I will encourage every person that knows the word of God and knows the teaching of Jesus and knows what the Bible says to go and warn these guys. Warn them. Why? Damnable heresies. Damnable heresies. Heresy will damn your soul. It works. It disintegrates. The devil is sick, beloved. The, 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 the devil is plotting the downfall of born-again Christians all around the world. He is plotting the downfall. And he's doing a good job of it on Facebook. Know your enemy. Watch out, Jesus said, in these last days, because we are going to have false Christs and false manifestations of Christ and a false message of Christ. Watch out for a false message and false doctrine. Watch out. Oh, no, we don't want to watch. It's too much effort. We'd rather sit on YouTube and watch tripe. Watch some conspiracy theory. No, my friend, watch out. You can literally be led to hell on your Facebook page. You can let, be led to hell by reading your news feed. You can be led to hell and lead others to hell while you're doing it. But it's not just you going. You start posting the stuff on Facebook and you lead others in that very disintegration. You lead others into that 
false religion. You lead others into that apostasy. In other words, it's not just you. It's probably about 100 people. Oh, well, it's just 100 people. Who cares if the guy's a Palatian? Who cares if he's an open theist? He said something that I like. Who cares? It really doesn't matter. 100 people isn't important. 100 people isn't important. If you have that kind of attitude and you've got over 7 billion people apparently on Facebook and they're teaching this kind of stuff or how many hundreds of thousands of so-called Christians teaching that stuff, the, the, the amount of people that are apostatizing from Facebook statuses is a vast number, a hundred at a time. And you've got a, perhaps how many thousands of so-called born-again Christians posting this stuff. You've got a major apostasy on your hand. Facebook is filled to the brim with every kind of heresy and false doctrine. Believe me when I tell you. It's filled to the brim. You have that kind of attitude. Oh, well, who cares? Who cares about his soul? Who cares about what he believes about Jesus Christ? Who cares that once he was, he was serving the Lord and was accounted faithful and we used to call him a brother in the Lord or a sister in the Lord? There's another one, a young lady. She was serving the Lord. She went off as well. She doesn't believe in anything anymore. She's gotten into... Conversion to Jewish stuff. No discernment. They should depart from the faith. They will give heed to seducing spirits. They will replace it with something else. This is a characteristic earmark, my friend, of the last days, where they depart from the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints, and they give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of their. Oh, it's not important. Who cares? It's just Facebook. My friend, people matter to God. My friend, people, young people, old people alike matter to God. These guys are waxing worse and worse. These heretics out there are waxing worse and worse. They're deceiving and being deceived and getting followers after them. They're making money off this tribe. The next one is Jesse Morrell. Oh, Jesse boy Morrell. One of the biggest heretics I know. He's an evangelist, a street evangelist. I'm all for evangelizing. Homosexuals, I'm all, in, all for evangelizing people on the streets and all for evangelizing people who are university students. I'm for it. I believe in evangelizing. But let me tell you something with the, with the crud that I've seen with the so-called evangelism stuff. If, if you bet it, it doesn't, it doesn't because these guys are misrepresenting the Lord Jesus Christ. He promotes Pelagianism. He promotes open theism. Could somebody be saved because of some truth that he says that because it's true? Yes, the Lord could. But the guy denies Original sin. He denies as original sin that man is a sinner. And he teaches open theism that says that God doesn't know everything. Jesse Morell, according to the Bible, is a heretic. He sat in Bill Randall's house. And he spoke to them about these things. He believes that he's sinless. He's sinlessly perfect. And he's busy preaching this stuff. This Finneyism. Which is heresy. Stuff coming from the American revivalist Charles Finney. And, he, and Finney was a Pelagian. Finney denied original sin. Who cares? Thousands follow. Why? Because essentially they don't know the word of God. Essentially they don't know the word of God. I can name casualty after casualty. You lead somebody astray theologically. You are responsible for that person. You lead them away from the Bible. Because this is your tool on how to get know what false doctrine is. This is how you discern the Bible with the witness of the Holy Spirit within you because you've been regenerated. This is your way to keep you straight in your thinking. But men shall depart, the Bible says. This is a prophecy. We are seeing the greatest departure and the greatest apostasy that the world has ever seen. The church is apostatizing left, right, and center, and nobody gives two flying flings about them. They don't give two flying flings about these poor people that are apostatizing left, right, and center. They don't give a, a two hoots about them. Why? Because it doesn't matter. We don't care about them. Beloved, true love warns. True love warns. It's not the Mother Teresa trick. What's a Mother Teresa trick? I want to make Hindus better Hindus, she said. I want to make Muslims better Muslims. What did she do? Buy them a hand grenade or an aeroplane to go into tall towers in New York City. She would have had more than enough money to do it. There's beauty in all religions that die. The Mother Teresa. Tap dance. 
Oh, says Charles Colson of the body. She's been condemned because of some universal statement she made. But she's the very embodiment of the love of Jesus. This is one of the leading evangelicals saying that a woman who said there's a beauty in all religions that die is, 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 is a marvelous manifestation of the love of Jesus. No, true Bible love, according to the book of Philippians, is bound up in truth. Your love must be abound in truth and in knowledge and discernment, the book of Philippians says. True Bible love is bound up in truth. You cannot say you love the homosexual without bringing in the consequences of his actions or the adulterer or the heretic for that matter or the fornicator. You can't do it or the drug addict. True Bible love, my friend, is bound up in truth. She didn't love them. She just sent them on the, the merry path to hell with her and her Roman Catholicism. Oh, you know, I don't want to convert them to my version of Christianity. I want to make them beautiful Muslims. A contradiction in terms. A beautiful Muslim. A beautiful imam. There's beauty in all religions that die. She just sent them to hell in a handbasket while they suffered their way to so-called salvation in her Nazi Death camps there, which was at the Sisters of Charity over there in India. Somebody went to, Dave Hunt went to visit her and said it looked like a death camp. It was a death camp. A Nazi death camp. Because these guys were suffering their way to salvation. Then you had Lady Diana coming a couple of, how many times, to feed these poor people. What did she do? She gave them nut chocolates so they could choke. Here, let's give you some more mercy over there. You can't chew, you haven't got teeth, I'll just give you an expensive nut chocolate just to end you in your misery. <laughs> Bizarre. She gave him nut chocolates. How's that? Well, what's a nut chocolate going to do for a guy that can't swallow? It's going to splodge in his throat and choke him. <laughs> That's what she was doing. This wonderful queen of heaven herself was busy doing. Oh, I want to just be the queen of people's hearts and kill them with nut chocolates. There in India, beauty in all religions that die. What a load of poppycock! And letting the Queen of Heaven herself feed them nut chocolates and get them to hell quicker than, than you can possibly imagine. Where did I get that from? I'm serious, she did give them nut chocolates. Dying people that can hardly chew, haven't got teeth. To suck the nuts and then die while they try and swallow it because they've got no teeth anymore. They can hardly chew. I'll give them some nut chocolates. Some of the most expensive from Britain. I'm sure there was a lot of deaths after Lady Diana left the Sisters of Charity as people were. <laughs> I'm going to off this, but in any case, sometimes you need to have a good laugh. I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> well, in any case. These issues are very important, <coughs> very important. Watch out, don't get your theology or Facebook. Get it from the word of God, get it from good Bible teachers. And may the Lord bless every single one of you that have listened to this teaching. God bless you.